Okay, so um, everyone, today we will study the lecture 10. By lecture 10, we cover two chapters, right, for our principle of financial management, uh, chapter 12 and chapter 13, right? So these two chapters, we will study risk, return, and capital asset pricing model. So when we talk about risk and return, right, I want you to know the concept well, right? So what is the risk? How to define risk? Risk means the measures of the uncertainty, right, surrounding the return that one investment can get, right? More formally, right, that means the variability of return associated with a given asset, right? So for a given asset, the return generated from this asset can be variable right, over time, and right? sometimes can go to upside and right, sometimes can go to the downside right so risk is not means what does not mean the loss be careful right for example in the ancient times right in the chinese character right, and also used in japanese right the risk is written as these two character right once the way and the g way g right way means what Way means the dangerous, right? G means what? G means the opportunity, right? So that means the risk are both dangerous and also what? Also with opportunity, right? You are not sure the next day, right? The price will be higher or lower, right? In the stock market, right? So risk can be also the potential gain, right? For example, in the past two weeks, right? Our market going down very quickly because our you know panic of what pandemic you know of covid 19 right but least week right because you will see the curve uh flatten right so the market recover very soon right so if you take the chance to buy the stock on last friday right this week you can make a what great gain right so sometimes Risk also means what? Opportunity, right? For example, during the financial crisis on 2008, right? If you, you know, buy the stock on that year, and right, most likely your account can show a very good performance, right, in the past 10 years, right? So that's the risk. How about return? Return means what? Means the percentage change of your price or account values right over some specific time, right? So return is the total gain or loss experienced on a given asset or given investment over a given period of time, right? How to solve return? Return is calculated with dividing the asset cash distributions during that time, right? Plus the change of the capital value itself with what? with by the beginning of the period investment value right? we will see this one in more detail in the following slide for the calculations right? but be careful return can be gain or can be lost that's consistent with our risk measures right so return can be what can be positive right or can be what can be negative right positive return means the gain right Negative return means what? Means a loss. Right? That's risk and return. Now we will see how to measure return in more detail right, in this formula. Our expiration of calculating return right, is based on the change of the price and also what you get in the cash flows while you're holding the asset. Right? So from the time t minus 1 to time t, right? so that means one period passed, right? you can observe how much the price changed for your asset, for your investment. And also, you will also receive what? You will also receive the distribution of the cash flows, right? it's, it's in the notation CT. Right? So you can say that's our return be calculated. Right, so that means the price change over this period, right? Plus how much you receive, right, from the cash flow in on during this time, right? So both together will measure what measure your total return, 
uh, in absolute amount, and uh, then we divide by the price at the beginning you purchase asset, right? So this one will be called what called return, a uh, return. So return has the two part, right? One part is the cash flow you received. The other part is from what from the price change by right, doing this time. Let's see some detail, right? For these formulas in the following questions. Robin wished to determine the return on the two stock she owned on 2012. At the beginning of the year, right, the stock she purchased is Apple, the Apple stock, traded for what? For $11.23 per share. And Walmart traded with what? With $60.33. Right, so this is what? Beginning price. Right, so these two are beginning price. We can call this one as what? As the P T minus one, right? And then this is P T minus one for the Walmart, right? During the year, Apple pay what? The dividend, right? So that's the C T by dividend cash flows you receive right? as investor, right? Walmart pay dividends what? $1.59 per share CT, okay? and at the end of the year, Apple stock was $532.17, right? that's the PT, right? after one period, right? after one period, and the Walmart price is what? 68.23, right? that's off the return for, you know, the stocks, uh, respectively, right? so for Apple, right? What's the return during this year, right? For Robin, Robin, first the dividends, right? Robin received plus the price change, PT minus PT minus one, right? Over what? Over the price he uh, he purchased for Apple, right? For Apple, right? He received dividend what? Five point three dollars per share, right? What's the price change? The price change for Apple right, is from what? From 411.23 to what? 532.17. Right? So 411.23, that's the price and the end. Right? So the price change will be the 532.17 right? minus 411.23. Right? So this is the price change right? over the beginning price for Apple stock. 411.23, right? You got return from Apple, right? Now let's move to the Walmart. Right? What's the return for holding or inviting in the Walmart for this year, right? For Robin, right? We use different colors, right? Right? So let's choose the price you have, right? In this Walmart stock, right? Walmart stock, right? Robin received what? Dividend 1.59. Right, 1.59, right, and also Walmart third forward, so for the 68.23, so Walmart, right, Walmart, for Walmart, Robin received dividends, what, 1.59, right, 1.59, and what's the price change, price starts from what, from the 60.33 dollars, right, 60.33, well, that's the beginning price, right? What's ending price? The ending price is what? 68, right? 0.23, right? So the price change will be 68.23 minus beginning price, 68.33, right? Over what? Over 68.33, right? So that's the total return for the Walmart in the percentage, right? You can see our calculations, right? Derive the return for the both stock by right? Apple's return by right? Apple stock's return right is thirty point seven dollars right for Walmart return is fifteen point seven dollars right so Apple has a higher return than Walmart right and also to be more uh, detailed right so this part right you know the dividend he received Robin received right? this part we call what called 
dividend, a dividend, right? And this one we call what? Call price change, right? Call price change. I call price change, right? So basically, right, our total return, right, has a two part, right, has a two part, right? Let me write down this one here, right? Our total return can be decomposed into a two source, right, two source, right? Our total return RT actually has a two resource, right? One's, uh, you know, the dividend, right? One's what? One's the price change. Right? So this part right, it comes from the dividend by right, Robin receive. Right? So this part we name this one as what? We name this one as what? As the uh, dividend yield. And this part we call what? We call it capital gain. Right? Capital gain, capital gain in percentage, right? So capital gain plus dividend yield, right, will be total return. So our total return has a two part, right? One is the dividend yield, or you can say the income yield, right? For the stock is dividend, right? For the you know for the bond is the coupon, right? It's interest, right? So we have the common name called income yield, right? Plus what? Plus the capital gain. Right? So both parts together right, will be the total return. Right? Total return. Okay, so let's say the you know the curve we already you know show before right in class. So here are the four graphs right for the stock bond bait bills and inflation inflation right for the past 90 years by right, from 1925 to 2015 right and uh, the green curve right is a small company stock right and the uh, black curve is what black curve is sp 500 right so the biggest 500 company right in the u.s market right and for the orange curve Right, it's the T what? T bills, right? The treasury issue bills, right? It's the long term treasury debt. The blue curve is what? Long, uh, it's the 30 days by right, short term what? Treasury bills, right? And uh, for the last one, the curve is what? It's the US inflation, right? Inflation. You can say, right, which curve performs best? In the long term, is what? It's a small company stock, right? You can say the annual compounding return is what? 12%, right? So if you put a dollar, right, on 1925, right, in the investment to the small, you know, company store, right, index, right, now the $1 can grow into what? 26 point, $26,433, right? Why the value can be, you know, much higher, right, after 90, 90 years? Because your compounding returns is 12%, what? Every year, right? 12% every year, right? So you can say, if you use what? If you use the rule of the 72, Right, 72 over 12 equal to what? 6, right? So it means every 6 years, right? Your money will be what? Will be doubled, right? So you can see we have what? We have the 90 years in total. So 90 over 6 years, right? 6 years is the cycle for your money to double every time, right? So we have the 15 cycles, right? So you have the 12. 2 raised to what? 15. That will be how much money right, will grow in your account right, if you put money into a small company stock index on the 1925.
right? So our returns is very appreciable, right? You know, annually, right, in the long term, right, in the U.S. history, right? You may wonder, right? We also experienced the financial crisis in the past decade, right? So on 2008, we have the global financial crisis, right? On the 1930, we have the what? Great Depression, right? And for this year, we have the COVID-19, right? Our market is also going down, right? So in the short term, of course, the market can be very, you know, volatile, very risky, right? Can experience the high drop down, right? And then recover. However, in the long term, right? The market is always what? Continue grow, right? In the long term. Why market can continue grow, right? Even in the short term, right? We experience the high risk. Why our market can continue grow? Because what? Because our either small company stock or the SP 500, right? This index is not always what? The same company inside, right? As you know, right? SP 500 is only for the 500 largest company, right? Trading in the US market, right? So the 500 companies with the history, right, it's, it's not exactly the same right, as the past, right? For example, right, you know, in uh, maybe 20 years ago, right, the largest company on the US market, right, for example, is the GM, right, General Motor, right? General, General Motor is still a great company in the US, right, even for now, however, GM now has many, what, competitors, like the Toyota, right? and the others, right? So GM is not the biggest company in the US right now, right? Instead we have the, you know, technology company like the Amazon, right? Amazon, right? Apple, even for the Microsoft, right? These companies is not available, what? 90 years ago, right? These companies most likely emerged, right? After what? 1995, right? So in a very recent decade, right, this company emerged, right? So you can see for every like 10 or 20 years, right, the new company will add into the index to replace the old company, right? So you see we continue inject new blood right, into the index, right? So with the new technology, right, with the new company, right, with the new, even new industry, right? new sectors, right? Our market can always, you know, growing right, with such, you know, force behind it. And right? so that's why you can see in the long term, our market can be not that risky, right? Can be always on the right path, right? So even for this year, right, you see our COVID-19 triggered the market, right? Dumped very quickly, right? But once our, you know, pandemic of the COVID-19, right, show the, you know, red check, right, so the, pa the pattern of the curve are flattened, right, our market will be recovered soon, right, so a good company can still generate what, good performance, right, in the long term, right, for example, Tesla, right, for Tesla stock, right, in the past two weeks, right, it used to be, you know, go to the bottom, like the 380 or $400, now, now the Tesla price already recovered right, to the 550. Right? So you can see in the long term, right, our market is not as risky as you think. Right? So that's why people need to what need to do the investment in the long term, right? In the long term. So talk about rule of 72, right? We do this one before, right? Here just a recap of this this rule, right? Rule of 72, right, is uh you know, a rule to determine how many years you will take, right, for your money to to double, right? How to solve it? We use 72 divided by what? Divided by the interest rate, right? We can get what? We can get how many years, right? For example, for the 4% interest rate, right, it takes 18 years, right, to double, right, for your, you know, for your money, right? So every 18 years, right, you can save from 30, 
age, right, to a 48 age, right, your money is doubled, right, then from 48 to 66, your money double again, and so on your age, 66, right, with initial investment, 10,000, right, you have $40,000 right, in your account. For the other case, for example, here, right, we not, you know, go to detail for each column, so you can do the calculations by yourself, right, for 12%, right, growth rate, and right, use 72 divided by 12 equal to what? 6. So every 6 years, right, your money will double. Right, so on the same retirement age, for example, on the 66, right, your balance will be what? Will be much higher right, with, compared with the 4% growth rate. Right? So use uh, 640,000 over what? 40,000 right, equal to what? Equal to a 16, right? 16 times bigger, right? Then you have the 4% growth rate, right? So even the 4% is, you know, compared with 12%, right? It's one third, right? However, our balance, right, will be what? Will be 16 times, right? So that's the power of what? Compounding, right? That's the power of growth rate, right? Compounded every year, right? So with the higher compounding rate, Right, you can enjoy a what much higher balance right, in the future. Right, you can see here, right? These four columns, right? Actually, you know, the numbers is not picked up right, randomly. The four percent is what? Four percent is the typical mortgage rate right, in the recent years, right? Six percent is what? Six percent is the you know For example, right, the car finance rate, right, eight percent is the, for example, st student loans rate, right, twelve percent is what, twelve percent is the credit card, right, interest charge rate, right. So you can see our bank, right, pay the very low interest to every savers, right, in your saving account, right, only maybe point one percent annually. Right. But they can use the money they pulled right, from individual investor to lend the money out, right? To get what? To get four percent, six percent, eight percent, and twelve percent, right? From the what? From the lendings, right? From the loans, right? From the mortgage, right? So that's how the commercial bank right make a profit. Right. Let me re review the examples we did before. Right. So here's the two guys. Right. One is the Miss Mr. Save earlier. Once the missive late, right? For missive earlier, right? Missive late, they both, you know, have a uh, what? Have a uh, eight percent annual return, right? So they have the same return for their account, right? But missive earlier, right? Start to do the investment on age twenty five. But missive late, late, right? Start to do the saving much later, right? On the age thirty four. Right, but miss save earlier. Right, was we'll stop to do more investment. Right, on the age thirty four. Right, he start to to put money into his account. Right, and miss save late. Even start with a late age. Right, but he continue to put money into his account. Right, until the age he get retired. But unluckily, you can see here. Right, even miss save late. Continue put money into his account, right? His accumulated balance when he got retired even lower than what we said earlier, right? Maybe you can think it is not fair, right? Because we see late, right? He continue put money into, right? He work hard, right? He always put money into his account. Why he can, right, have a balance even less than we said earlier, right? Seems like he's Lady, right? He stopped to put money into his account on age 34, right? So why Miss Hip earlier can have what? Much more balance, right? On the age when they both retired at an age 31, because what? Because you see here, right? If we use the rule of 72, right? 72 over 8 equal to what? Nine. So every nine years, right, the money or investment will be doubled, 
right? So you can see here, right? 25 plus 9 equal to 34, right? So that means after 9 years on age 34, right, his investment on the 25 will be doubled. So we'll replicate, right, replicate the same amount, 2,000 here, right? Even he don't put the money, right, on this age. However, because the power of compoundings, right, after nine years, right, the first investment doubled, and so you can see how he, you know, have a uh, synthetic cash flows right here, right, because the power of compounding, right. So our twenty six savings right, also will be doubled on the thirty five, right, and twenty seven two thousand will be replicated on age thirty six, right, twenty eight will be. 37, so you can see even he stopped to put the money into his account. However, because of the rule of 72, right, the money itself replicate every year, right, so that means that every year he put another $2,000 into his account. That's why you can see his final balance even higher than Mr. Blade, right, even he stopped to put money into, right. So from these examples, we generate our conclusion. Right, we must to do our saving as early as possible. Right, if you put the money into the right account, right, with the uh, you know compounding, right, your final balance can have a higher value than the others do the saving later. Right, so especially you know for our you know bad time, right, like the financial crisis, right. If you continue to do a lot of spendings, right, you don't have savings, you don't have investment, right, you will consume everything, right, in the future, for your future, you know, spendings, right, so please save your money earlier, right, and put your account, right, into a right people's hand, right, so you can get a good return, right, for investment. And for the risk, right, we want to mention, there are three risk preference, right, in the economy, right? Economists, right, use the three categories to decide how the investors will respond to the risk. Risk averse investors, right, their attitude to the risk will be not good, right? So they don't like risk, right? If they want to, you know, take more risk, they must to re require with a compensation with a higher word return, right? So these guys hate risk. Uh, if they want to take more risk, they must to compensate it with a higher return. That's called risk averse in investor, right? And we also have what risk neutral investor, right? Risk neutral investors they have the attitude to the risk. Means what? Means they not asking for more compensation for risk, right? With the increasing of risk, they were asking for the linear growth of what? return, right, proportionally, right, no more actual compensations, right, so that's for risk neutral, right, investors, right, so with the higher of the risk, right, they ask him for what, the proportion increase of what, return, right, so this, if this was a risk, right, and this was a return, right, their return will be increased proportionally with the risk, right, but for risk averse, Right, investors, right, with the higher risk, right, they asking for the exponential growth of what return, right, they hate return, uh, they hate risk. Sorry. Last one is the risk thinking, right, inventors. These guys what? These guys, you know, is a guy like the gambling, right? They like the you know speculations, right? So. They prefer to take what? Higher risk. Right? So even with the growth of what? Risk. Their return is not required to compensate. Right? With the actual amount. Right? So you can see with the growth of the risk, right? The increase of the return right, required actually what? Reduced. Right? So that's uh, how we define the three category of the Inventors, right, based on their attitude right, to risk, right. Now we will study a new concept called called expected return. Right, expected returns are based on the probability of the possible outcomes, 
right? We mentioned in the definition of the risk, right? We are not sure what happened, what will happen in the future, right? So how to uh, take an analysis of the possible outcome, right? We use expired returns, right? We use the possible outcomes, right, as the possible events, right? Now we first find out, right, what's the probability of each outcome, right? Now we solve what? Expired return. So expired returns is means what means average return right if the process is prepared are repeated right every time for example right our expired returns can be solved with what probability times return right and for different possible outcomes we have the different you know probability and return for that case right now after we solve each scenarios return we adding them up and right, will be the total expired return right let me show you one example suppose you predict right our economies will show in a three possible trend right in the following years right economies can go to booming right means economies can get better right all economies just you know grows mildly as normal case right Maybe economists can even go to a downside, right? That's called recession. So there are three possible states of our economy, right? Every state has different probabilities, right? There are 30% our economists will go to, you know, upside, right? Go to a booming, right? There are 50% of our economists will stay the normal, right? And uh, what's the probabilities, right, for economists go to recession? Right, because we cover all the state possible right, into a three category, right? So their total probability must equal to what? Must equal to one, or you can say hundred percent. Right? So what's the percentage from the recession? Will be hundred percent, right? Minus thirty percent, minus fifty percent, right? Equal to what? Twenty percent, right? You use the total sum, hundred percent, right? Minus thirty percent, right? Minus fifty percent from the normal, right? Remain you know, percentage small recession will be 20%, or you can say 0.2, right, 0 0.2. This is the booming, right, this is normal, this is recession, right. There are 30% chance, right, our economy is, is booming, right, 50% chance, right, the economy stay in the normal, only 20% case, right, the economy will stay in recession, right. And based on different state, Performance of the two stock are different, right? So we put the performance of the stock by right, return in the columns C and T, right? C and T. For example, when economies go to booming, right? Return of the C stock will be 15%, right? And when the economies go to the booming, the T stock will have return 25%. When economies stay in the normal, Right, C stock will has 10% return. T stock right has 20% return. But why not economies go to a recession? Right, the C has only 2% return. T has what 1% return. Right, that's how we observe or how we you know forecast return right, based on the three different state of economy. Now our goal is to what to solve the expired return right based on these you know tables right based on this table. Right. So what is expired return for the C stock? For C stock, right, we use expired return, right? Expired return for the C stock, right? There are three different states. Boomy, normal, right, and recession. Right. So we will write down our formulas, right? Will be the probability, right? I times return I then do what? Then do the summation. Right? There are three states. Right? So one, two, three. Right? I means each state of what? Economies. Right? For example, here we have the three states. Boomy, normal, and recession. For boomy, right? probability is what? For point three, right? return is what? 15%. Right? For normal, right? the probability is 0.5. Right? Return is what? 10%. Right. For the norm of recession, right, we have the 0.2 right, chance 
to go to recession, return accordingly is what only two percent, right? So we now adding these three product up, right? We saw expired return, right? For the you know for the six stock, right? Based on what you have, right? For these three, you know, state. Right, so the total will be what? 9.9% right, for the C stock. Right? We can do the same thing for the T stock, right? also three states. Right? So three products that are adding up. Right? So the T stock, right? T stock right? when we use the same method, right? we solve the number as what? 17.7%. Right? So that's what we got for the C and T stock. Right? It's by return. Okay, so you can see here. If the risk free rate right is four point fifteen percent, what is the risk premium right, for the C and T store? What's the mean of the premium? Premium means something above something, right? Risk premium means what? Means the return right, of your stock with the risky investment, right? Above what? Above risk free asset return, right? So, what's your return? Above the risk free right, return is called a premium right, for the investment, right? So, we already solved the C stock return 99%, right? So, 19.9%, right? Minus risk free rate is the premium for the C stock, right? So, 9.9. .9 Minus 4.15 right equal to what? 5 point, right? 75 percent right. That's the risk premium for the C stock. For T stock, same right. We use the expired return, which is soft right. 7.7 percent right. Minus the risk-free return right. 4.15 percent right. Now risk premium for the T stock is equal to what? 13 point. 55%. That's how we solve what? Risk premium. Okay, let me show you another example. I right? use a stock. I right? use a stock. How we solve what? It's by return. Right? For example, right? for example, there are what? There is one stock A, right? Stock A. For stock A, the price today, right, and T equal to zero, right? The price equal to what? Price equal to a hundred dollars, right? And uh, that's a P zero. P zero equal to a hundred dollars per share, right? And uh, assume we want to forecast the price of the stock A in the next week, right? And we want to solve its by return. We can form our what? We can also form a three different what? State, right? The stock price can either what? Going up, right? Or stay the same, right? Or going down, right? There are only possible, you know, trend for the stock price, right? In the next week, right? Either up or down or stay the same, right? For example, if the stock price going up, right? We forecast the price of what? One twenty dollars. Right, if the stock price stay the same, will be still a hundred dollars. Right, if the stock price going down, right, it's possible price in the next week will be ninety dollars. Right, and uh, we also, you know, forecast the possibility, right, for each chain. Right, so there are what, for example, there are twenty percent chance, right, the stock price for going up, right, and uh, forty percent chance, right, stock price will still stay the same. Right, and the remaining possibilities will be the chance by right, the price will going down, right? So one minus twenty right, minus forty, right, equal to what? Forty percent, right? So our stock price will has forty percent chance by going down to what? Ninety dollars, right? So my question is, what's the expired return? Right, for this stop A, right? What's the expired return? And we use our formulas, right? But before we apply the formula, 
First, let's solve the return for each chain in detail, right? Return when the price goes goes up will be 120 minus 100 by over 100 by equal to what? Equal to the 20% return. We don't have any dividends by right, body stock, right? So our return just a price change, not including what dividend yield, right? If the price stays the same, right? That's no change. Our return is zero percent, right? If the price going down, right, we have a 90 minus 100 over what? 100, right? So minus 10 over 100 will be minus 10 percent, right? So that's the three returns we just saw by right, four different chain, right? In, on each pass. Now we want to solve what? we want to solve the expiry return, right? To combine all these three different possible paths and uh, what's the relative return, right? Respectively. Now we use the same, you know, expiry return to cover all these three possible outcomes, right? So let's solve this one. So expiry returns for the stock A, right? Equal to the probability for each chain, right? Times return. Then do the summations. So when the stock price going up, right, we have the probability what? 20%, right? Times return what? 20%, right? So this one is what? This one is the probability, right? Goes up, right? This is the return, right? When the stock price going up, right? Then we solve what? We solve return for the same, right? It's for the same means the price not change, right? So this chain we have the 40% chance, right? Returns zero percent. Last one is for the down trend, right? Last possibility forty percent, right? Returns is minus ten percent, right? Now we will do the summations for the, these three terms, right? Twenty times twenty will be four hundred, and right? four hundred with the two percentage will be four percent, right? And this is zero percent. Last one minus. Right, minus 400, right, so with the down percentage will be minus what? 4%, right, so 4% plus 0% minus 4% will be what? 0%, right, so we forecast our, you know, overall expiry return for the A store, right, in the next week, right, will be what? Will be 0%, right, so if you put your money, Right, into buying this stock A, right? Your percent, your possible overall, right? Return, right? In the next week, based on our analysis, right, will be no gain, no loss, right? Will be zero percent, right? We try to cover all possible chain, right, into one measure, right? It's called expiry return, right? So I can, I hope you can take these examples, right, as the, you know, as the case to study for expiry return. Right. And we call this we call this you know we call this model as what as a tri nominal model right tri nominal model you can search for the tri nominal models on what on Google right it can turn out many page right relevant to this model. This model is very popular, right? So we use this model to do the forecast of stock price, right? So this is for only for one week, for example, right? You can also extend this model with even more weeks, right? Based on these three possible paths, right? For example, this for the first week, right? And the second week, we will also do the what? Do the trinominal chain, right? So we can, you know, extending the model, right, from one week to week until, you know, many, many weeks, right, so we can use this one, right, trinomial tree, right, to forecast the price, right, use our machine learning, right, codings, right, to do the forecast, right, it's very popular in the computer science, right, to use this model, right, to do the forecast of expiry return, right, or expiry price, right, so let me know if you have any questions, please put your comments below the videos right on YouTube. Thanks.